In the height of the Cold War, the Russians developed a new type of super heavy tank. One that could fight over any type of terrain, reaching areas inaccessible to conventional tanks, powerful enough to break through enemy front lines, and if necessary, withstanding even the shockwave of a nuclear explosion. But this tank never saw any action. Its prototype was cancelled and scrapped right before production, and it was only ever given the mysterious name of Object 279. Hold up, hold up. This is supposed to be an aviation channel. I subscribe for planes only. I only want planes. More planes. Now trust me, this video will be just as good as my regular content, so strap in, let's go. After World War II and the grand entrance of atomic weapons used in Japan, the world realized that warfare would never be the same. These new powerful bombs would allow conventional forces to be wiped away instantly and front lines to shift dramatically. Thus, any new military land vehicle under development would not only need to be fast, able to traverse inhospitable terrain, it would also need to be able to withstand a distant nuclear blast. And with Russia being Russia, they were quick to come up with a solution. Developed in secret at the Kirov plant in Leningrad in 1957, this new heavy tank would act much like the heavy tanks of World War II, such as the German Tiger I and II and the Soviet JS-2 and III, destined to fill the ranks of the Supreme Command Reserve. This project would remain unnamed, only appearing in files as Object 279, and this is the tank that they came up with. Object 279 would be a super heavy tank, weighing over 60 metric tons and be 6.77 meters long, which is around 22 feet, and 3.4 meters wide, which is around 11 feet. It was also 2.6 meters tall, 8.7 feet. It would have a crew of four, including a driver, a gunner, a loader for the gun, and a commander. Now, you might have noticed something very different about this tank. Let's talk about those four tracks. This tank featured a four-track running gear mounted on two longitudinal rectangular hollow beams, which were also used as fuel tanks. This design would actually spread the weight of this heavy tank over a larger surface area, resulting in 0.6 kilograms per centimeter squared, or around 8.5 PSI. This made it perfect for cross-country capabilities on swampy terrain, soft soils, and areas full of cut trees. It would also be able to go completely through anti-tank obstacles, like the hedgehogs that you can see here, something that many other tanks would have failed to traverse. Its weapon system was also advanced for the time, featuring a 130mm cannon with a semi-automatic loader with 24 rounds, infrared sights, and even a radar rangefinder. It also had a machine gun with 800 rounds. Now, when it comes to armor, its frontal protection was as thick as 11 inches, which compared to its contemporary at the time, the American M60, that only had 6 inches. Its unique oval shape was designed to protect it against blast shockwaves, such as a nuclear weapon, preventing the tank from flipping over. The whole crew compartment had full chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear protection, as well as heaters and air conditioning for comfort. The whole tank had a powerful 1,000 horsepower 2DG8M diesel engine, giving the 60-ton tank a top speed of 55 kilometers per hour or 34 miles per hour, and a range of 300 kilometers or 186 miles on a single tank of gasoline, which is fairly impressive for how heavy this tank was. With the prototype finished by 1959 and testing on the firing range, it seemed like the tank of the future had finally arrived. So, why was it never put into service? 
One of the key reasons why this heavy tank project and other research into designs like this was abandoned, and why the Object 279 never made it past this prototyping stage, was that the Soviet military in 1960 chose to stop operating any tanks over 37 tons, which also includes any additional attachments such as mine sweeping or smoke bombs. As this type was over 60 tons, it never stood a chance. And this was because there was a push from Nikita Khrushchev himself to adopt alternative land military vehicles, such as guided missile tanks like the IT-1. He felt that at the time that World War III, if it was to happen, would be all about high-tech weapons of war, and that a simple heavy tank would be easily defeated by some sort of new hovering or flying monstrosity. There was also another drawback with the weight of the Object 279. Whilst the treads allowed the tank's surface area to be much greater and the pressure to be lower, and it would be able to operate easily on anything from sand to snow, it did actually have one limit. Bridges. Notably, bridges that were throughout regional Russia that could not hold such a large tank. Because even though the tank has a large surface area, it still weighs 60 tons. If the Russians found themselves in a war and had to retreat through their own home country, they would struggle to get their own tanks over their own rivers. And lastly, this might be the real killer. Object 279 was too darn expensive. The tank burned through fuel when moving through swampy areas, it cost a ton to build, repair and maintain, and it was impossible to make it shorter. Its turret would stick out over the landscape and be an easy target. Today, there is still one of the three non-functional prototypes in a museum in Russia. And that leaves us with a what-if question. Would Object 279 have proven effective on the battlefield? Despite the fearsome reputations of vehicles like the Tiger during World War II, they actually ended up becoming maintenance hulks. Whether a complicated design like the quadruple tracked tank in a fast paced mechanized war in Europe would have been game changing is an open question. But chances had the Cold War become hot, no American tank crew would have enjoyed facing the last Soviet monster tank. Today's tanks have evolved to be fast and serve a central role in military forces. There are a few distinct light or heavy tanks, and with the use of nuclear weapons considerably unfeasible, tanks no longer really have that design limit in mind. Instead, we have tanks that have a central role in a mechanized division, and are able to fill the heavy and light roles simultaneously. Object 279 remains as a relic to a time when nuclear war was not only seen as likely, but inevitable. And I for one am happy it was never built. This video today was suggested by our Patreons. If you want to suggest a topic, see videos early and support the channel, then you can click the link down below to find out more. And if you want to see more content like this, or if you're new to the channel, especially considering this is a tank video that has appeared some reason on a aviation channel, that's air quotes, I'm putting them up there, then I invite you to check out the other videos on the channel, and if you like it, subscribe. And I've also started a new channel that you can watch called Aviation Station, that has news and reviews from the world of aviation. Check it out when you get the chance. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. Here are all your lovely names on screen now, and I couldn't have done it without you. Thanks for watching.